Um, actually, I'm going to see if I can get this one here. Crap. That messes everything up. My apologies. Um, that's not going to make sense. I'll show you why. I'll show you on this problem how to do it. Um, I'll show you what that looks like. Uh, I'll explain. Okay. But basically, ladies and gentlemen, the main important thing we need to do to simplify these. I'm sorry, I was changing a problem in the book. Tamisha? Basically, what we need to do, guys, is we need to be able to simplify these. Using our rules of radicals, we can only combine when the root is the same, which it is, and as well as the radicand. So basically, what I need to do is say, all right, can I simplify these? So how can I simplify the square root of 28x and square root of 63x? Well, I see that I can rewrite this as, again, the square terms, right? And I can rewrite this as 4 times 7x minus, here, I can rewrite this as 9 times 7 times x. Does everybody see what I did? Now, what I did is I rewrote them as square numbers. The square numbers I used were 4 and 9. And the reason why I like using 4 and 9 is because now I know I can take the square root of 4. The square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. OK? Now I have my radicands are exactly the same as well as my roots. So now I can subtract. But just remember, when you're subtracting, you're actually subtracting your coefficients in front, right? So 4 times 2 is really 8, square root of 7x, minus 3, square root of 7x, which then is going to provide 5, square root of 7x, right? Just like when we had addition and subtraction. The radicand, that radicand that's exactly the same for both of them, does not change. Only your coefficients in front are